السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد Let me uh, mute this. So, brothers and sisters, we welcome you to your tafsir class. A lot has been going on. A lot has been going on. We're all over the place. But, you know, inshallah, everything will be handled in due time accordingly. Um, we are at ayah number 50 of Surah Al-Qasas. And inshallah ta'ala, Mus'ab will uh, be able to recite. Tfaddal. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فإن لم يستجيبوا لك فعلم أنما يتبعون أهواءهم ومن أضل ممن اتبع هواه بغير هدى من الله إن الله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين All right, but if they do not respond to you, then know that they only follow their own desires. And who is more astray than one who follows his desires without guidance from Allah? Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. Uh, please close the door. Thanks. All right, so let's see what the Sheikh says before we jump on to the benefits. فَأَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكْ فَلَمْ يَأْتُوا بِكِتَابٍ أَهْدَى مِنْهُمَا If they don't respond to you, i.e. they don't bring forward a book with better guidance than the Torah and the Quran. فَأَلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاهُمْ أَيْ فَأَلَمْ أَنَّ تَرْكَهُمْ اتِّبَاعَكَ لَيْسُوا ذَاهِبِينَ إِلَى حَقٍّ يَعْرِفُونَهُ وَلَا إِلَى هُدًا Know that them abandoning your path is not because they're going to another truth that they know, nor is it because they go into some sort of guidance. وَإِنَّمَا ذَلِكَ مُجَرَّدُ اتِّبَاعٍ لِأَهْوَائِهِمْ Rather, this is merely their following of their whims and desires. وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ اتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ هُدًا مِّنَ اللَّهُ Who is more misguided than one, than one who follows his desires without guidance from Allah? فَهَذَا مِنْ أَضَلِّ النَّاسِ This is among the most misguided of people. حَيْثُ عُرِضَ عَلَيْهِ الْهُدَى وَالصِّرَاطُ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ الْمُوصِلُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَإِلَى دَارِ كَرَامَتِهِ Because that person was presented, he was offered the guidance and the straight path which leads to Allah and his abode of nobility. He did not even pay attention to it, did not even turn towards it. Nor did he lean towards it, nor did he comply, nor did he go in that direction. وَدَعَاهُ هَوَاهُ إِلَى سُلُوكِ الطُّرُقِ الْمُوصِلَ إِلَى الْهَلَاكِ وَالشَّقَاءِ And he followed his desires which guided him to travel on a path that leads to destruction and wretchfulness. فَاتَّبَعَهُ وَتَرَكَ الْهُدَى So he followed it and he abandoned the guidance. فَهَلْ أَحَدٌ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ is there anyone who is uh, more misguided than one whose description is such? And it is his oppression and his transgression and his lack of love for the truth that necessitated that he remains upon misguidance and that Allah does not guide him. Ya Akhwan, you have no idea how relevant this is to today's da'wah scene and the condition of the followers of the people in the da'wah scene. If you really want to break it down into small uh, uh, segments and then delve into each one of them 
or if you want to identify the common denominator between all of the people involved in da'wah who don't seem to understand what they're being told by the revelation and subsequently by those who are following the revelation such as ourselves, then look no further than this. What people don't understand is when you're presented with the truth and you reject it, you are therefore then deprived of understanding this truth as a punishment. Understand what I'm saying? Listen to what I'm saying. For instance, we tell the Muslims, brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet wasallam informed us about rulers and people in charge and kings and princes who will have evil traits and evil qualities and they will spread corruption and so on and so forth. And he, the Prophet wasallam told us the code of conduct, how to deal with them, what to do, what not to do, to what level we need to be patient, to, la- to what level we comply. What is the level of compliance? The level of compliance is that you obey them as long as they don't command you to disobey Allah. As long as they don't command you to disobey Allah. So whatever they tell us that is not a, a sin, that is not a sin, you, you don't have to listen to the sin. Anything else, anything else, you are patient. You bear with patience. You say, brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah bless you. And may Allah protect you. This is the Islamic teaching. And we have to follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's all that we're doing. That's all that we're doing. You tell this to the people. Now, what happens when they reject the sunnah? Just understand the, the gravity of this. What happens when they reject the sunnah? When they act audaciously? When they're arrogant and prideful? Not only now do they dismiss the way of the Prophet wasallam, but they also immediately turn into vicious beasts. They become into... I don't even know how to put it. The fact that we're simply telling the people we're obeying the Prophet ﷺ, at least this is our understanding. Yani if, if what we're doing was something completely unfounded, like a, a bid'ah from scratch, I can understand if you say, okay, even if you have a, a, an opinion, no, we don't have to agree with you and we can be vile. No, I'm saying what we have a, 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 an ijma' on, a consensus on. Some people want to claim that there's no consensus. It's debatable. But no one can claim that there isn't even a discussion about a consensus being there. And worst case scenario, we're following the prophetic traditions in terms of how to deal with these rulers. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the people that don't want to comply with the sunnah, Allah Azza wa Jal misleads them. So they fall into a number of calamities, a number of errors. Just look at the gravity of disobeying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and being among those who follow their hawa without, uh, without hudan from Allah. First, they claim that you, we are agents. Agents? Like agents for, for even uh, American uh, uh, you know, organizations like RAND, as uh, Daniel invented the term, RAND Khali. So we're... we're I'm an agent whose objective in life is to divide the Muslims. Mm, very bright, very nice one. Second, uh, we are uh, on the payroll of the governments. The governments, they come to my house, they say, MashaAllah, Abu Musa, Barakallah, Fikum, you're doing a great job in defending our uh, uh, entity, in defending us. What would you like, Habibi? Would you like a, a new house? Would you like a new a car? Anything that you want? You want us to put money in your bank account? Oh, you want us to protect you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All day. They come in and out. I'm working with all of them. That's that's the second slander and claim. Even though in my entire life, I haven't met a single person from the uh, from the Saudi government. You know what I'm saying? I have absolutely nothing to do with anyone. I'm just doing my own thing. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Thirdly, oh, the takfir. By the way, when you call someone an agent, they say that we're agents whose objective is to secularize and liberalize Islam, this is also takfir. This is an indirect takfir, or you can even call it direct takfir. And then uh, uh, then the coining the new terminology, a bootlicker. Brother Hajji, I hope you repent to Allah soon. 
Because if you invent, I don't know if you invented this term. The first time I ever heard it was from you. Maybe there's a predecessor for you. But you popularized it and you started an, an evil sunnah. And, and, and now whoever follows you on that, you will bear the sin of that and all the people that will say that term until Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And at this point, 50% of our comments on the channel is bootlicker. The most, the most derogatory term you could think of towards a fellow Muslim. And it's a takfiri term in its essence. It, the, the term means for you to be a bootlicker, meaning you've gone down on, your, on the ground in sujood. Instead of worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal and making sujood to Allah, you instead, you have your head instead in front of the boots of the leader and you're licking his boot. If there's anything more disgusting and vile, then tell me what it is. Unless we start using some real foul language. And these knuckleheads use this term all day like they are saying Bismillah. As though they're saying Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha Illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Wa Astaghfirullah. They use the term bootlicker like it's all good. You're calling another Muslim. You're claiming he's falling and making technically sujood before a ruler and licking his boots in the ultimate humiliation, basically saying, I favor you over Allah, and I favor you over the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and I favor you over Islam, and I will obey you in spite of them. That's what a bootlicker means. That's what it means. And now the average Muslim who doesn't even know his, his uncle from his aunt comes over here. Oh, another bootlicker. Oh, bootlicking is so good, it's dripping. Blah, blah, blah. Basha Allah, tabarakallah. And I can enumerate uh, 10 other calamities that those Muslims have fallen into of passing takfir on us, claiming we are agents, claiming we are bootlickers, we are on the payroll of, of governments. And wallahi ladhi la ilaha ghayru. Wallahi all these are lies and slanders. Wallahi they're lies and slanders. They will say anything to, to prove their point. You know why? Because they are this. Who is more misguided than one who follows his desires, desires without guidance from Allah? Our only crime is that we say we listen and we obey to the Quran and the Sunnah, and which tell us to listen and obey to the ruler as long as they don't uh, uh, do kufr bawah. A kufr bawah that is not open to speculation. Because they did this relation with this country, this is kufr bawah. Or because they celebrated Halloween, this is kufr bawah. You must be as ignorant as, astaghfirullah, I don't want to say the name of the animal, for you to really think that those are considered kufr bawah mukhrij an al millah. You don't know what you're saying. You don't understand. You haven't studied. You don't know the intricacies. You don't know the subtleties. You don't know the foundations. You don't know the usul. You don't know the principles. But you have a tongue, mashaAllah, tabarak rahman as long as a, a, that of a, of a lizard or a snake or whatever has a long tongue among the animals. And you just all day pss, pss, spewing your poison and your, your, uh, your takfiri rhetoric and ideology. And then... In the same breath, me, me, takfir, a'udhu billah, Allah, I don't do, no takfir. No, but everybody's beautiful. Rebellion, me, rebellion, calling people, what, what rebellion? I got nothing to do, la, la, don't rebel. Huh? They're watching us, they're watching us, so for just to be safe, I'm not rebellion, and I'm not a rebellious, and I'm not calling anyone to rebellion. And then two minutes later, you tweet the, the biggest Takfiri tweet with the most khuruj you can have in a sentence. Get out of here with that stuff, man. Man, people have lost their marbles, man. Wallah, this is crazy. It's really insane what, what point we've reached. But look, guys, I'm telling you, it's because of this. Allah Azza wa Jal punishes the people. When they don't follow the guidance, فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ when they deviated, Allah caused their hearts to deviate. And I say to, to Daniel and others, your, your turn is coming, inshallah. My response is coming. And, and I never wish evil upon a Muslim. Don't ever think that I would wish that, you know, Daniel is uh, he's harmed or that, uh, or that you know, he's, he's, uh, that some government go after him. A'udhu billah. I would never wish this for a, a Muslim. No matter how much I disagree with him. I wish nothing but good for him and for me and for everybody out there. But if he doesn't want to be in trouble, then he needs to, you know, watch what he's saying. However, I would never be one who would report or do something of this nature. 
But my threat, not even a threat, my statement here is in terms of me responding academically to all of these lies and slanders. I will make that video, inshallah ta'ala, to expose the double standards and the lies that are being that are being spread and circulated among the Muslims. That's what I mean. As for me trying to wish harm upon him or cause him harm because of these statements, uh, I don't roll like that. At the end of the day, he's a Muslim and I wish nothing but good for my for every Muslim on uh, in the world. Wallah al-musta'an. Tayyip. When they deviated, Allah caused their hearts to deviate. You turn away from the truth, man, it's going to be difficult for you to accept it afterwards. So, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. Subhanallah. The one who oppression becomes a, a description of theirs and stubbornness is also an adjective. Like this is this is the, the summary. If you want to summarize what they are, then it's just going to be an oppressive, stubborn person. And that's why we say, hey, listen, they wear this with that. No, 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 no. No, you're a bootlicker anyways. <laughs> Guidance came to them. They said they rejected it. <laughs> and uh, desires were presented to them, so they followed them. They blocked upon themselves the doors of guidance and the paths which lead to it. And they open upon themselves the doors of deviance and misguidance and the paths which lead to that. Uh, therefore, they are in the midst of their desires and their oppression wandering. وفي شقائهم وهلاكهم يترددون and in their uh, in their wretchfulness and in their destruction they keep going back and again and again وفي قوله فإن لم يستجيبوا لك فعلم أنما يتبعون أهواءهم and in the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal so if they do not respond to you then know that they're following their desires دليل عن على أن كل من لم يستجب للرسول is an evidence that whoever does not respond to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَذَهَبَ إِلَىٰ قَوْلٍ مُخَالِفٍ لِقَوْلِ الرَّسُولِ And he goes to an, a position, an opinion that opposes the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يَذْهَبْ إِلَىٰ هُدَىٰ He did not go to guidance وَإِنَّمَا ذَهَبَ إِلَىٰ هَوَىٰ Rather he went to misguidance And these people in their effort to, to uh, belittle us they actually wind up mocking the way of the Prophet sallallahu and his sunnah they wind up mocking the Prophet ﷺ's sunnah, which if we were to play their game, would be a takfir. If I, were to pray, if I were to play their game, that would be takfir. I could pass kufr on someone who mocks the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Because Prophet ﷺ said, for example, about this, uh, if the uh, ruler uh, wrongs you, uh, even if he strikes you back and, and takes your money, Still, you cannot remove a hand of obedience and you cannot withdraw from obedience and you cannot go against them. So now they joke. They say, yeah, you'll go send your wives and, and your daughters. Let them, you know, do this and let them do that. Yeah, and you submit some more to the ruler. It's, it's, it, this is a it, it, slight, not even slight. It's a grave mockery of the way of the Prophet ﷺ and what he taught us. And you could see that in the tweets. The, not the tweets, the, the channel, the Telegram channel. The greatest channel on planet Earth is Daniel's channel. It's muted and only he can post. And then he posts and no one can respond. And his posts are all vile and disgusting, but you're like, you can only just sit there. And then they tell you, why don't you confront him? Why don't you talk to him? Why, why, why doesn't he give us the chance to? We have to tweet something, then he, he takes screenshots the tweet and then he puts it on his channel. I mean, come on, man. No, oh, I filter. I filter people's comments, but I don't block them completely so that they can't express themselves. Or at least I give the people the chance. You know, people comment on the channel. I respond. If somebody's too disgusting, we block him. We we delete the comment. But there's some sort of contact with the people. But just to impose on them my dictatorial opinions and then not give them a chance to respond is ludicrous. Tayyip. وَلَقَدْ وَصَلْنَا لَهُمْ وَلَقَدْ وَصَلْنَا لَهُمُ الْقَوْلَ أَيْتَابَعْنَاهُ وَوَصَلْنَاهُ وَأَنزَلْنَاهُ شَيْئًا فَشَيْئًا رَحْمَةً بِهِمْ وَلُطْفًا لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ uh, Where is that ayah? And we have repeatedly conveyed to them the Qur'an that they might be reminded. 
so the sheikh said we uh, we followed it and we were persistent upon it and we we brought it down or we sent it down in uh, gradual uh, gradually as mercy to them and out of kindness perhaps they will be reminded when the ayat of Allah are re repeated upon us perhaps you will be reminded and perhaps the clear evidence of the Quran will descend upon us at the time of need so Allah sending the Quran in portions becomes a source of mercy for us why are they objected to that which is supposed to be beneficial for them? That's the golden question. طيب. طيب. Here we go. So now we have an interesting uh, uh, break here. Where, uh, sorry about that. It says, فَصْلٌ فِي ذِكْرِ بَعْضِ الْفَوَائِدُ وَالْعِبَرِ فِي هَذِهِ الْقِصَّةِ الْعَجِيبَةِ We're going to cover some benefits and some uh, morals that we deduce from this amazing story. Among them, فَمِنْهَا أَنَّ آيَاتَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَعِبَرَهُ وَأَيَّامَهُ فِي الْأُمَمِ السَّابِقَةِ إِنَّمَا يَسْتَفِيدُ بِهَا وَيَسْتَنِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ First of all, that the signs of Allah and the lessons that He gave us with the previous nations, those, the only ones who benefit from them are the believers. The only ones who are enlightened by them are the believers. فَعَلَىٰ حَسَبِ إِيمَانِ الْعَبْدِ تَكُونُ عِبْرَتُهُ Depending on the level of the slave's faith will be his admonishment and how much he benefits from the lesson. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ إِنَّمَا يَسُوقُ الْقَصَصِ لِأَجْلِهِمْ And that Allah Azza wa Jal only narrates those stories for who? The believers. وَأَمَّا غَيْرُهُمْ As for others, فَلَا يَعْبَأُ اللَّهُ بِهِمْ Allah does not care about them. وَلَيْسَ لَهُمْ مِنْهَا نُورٌ وَهُدَىٰ And they will not have from these stories any light or any guidance. Another benefit. وَمِنْهَا أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ إِذَا أَرَادَ أَمْرًا هَيَّا أَسْبَابَهُ If Allah Azza wa Jal intends a matter, Allah will facilitate its causes. وَأَتَ بِهَا شَيْئًا فَشَيْئًا بِالتَّدْرِيجِ فَلَا بِالتَّدْرِيجِ لَا دُفْعَةً وَاحِدَةً And that Allah Azza wa Jal will bring it forth in a gradual manner. One by one and not in one shot. Not all at once. And among them, the, the nation that has been uh, subdued and weakened by others. No matter how weak it gets, it should not be overtaken with laziness in terms of demanding its right. وَلَا الْيَأْسُ مِنْ اِرْتِقَائِهَا إِلَىٰ أَعْلَى الْأُمُورِ Nor should it despair from trying to reach the loftiest of matters. خُصُوصًا إِذَا كَانُوا مَظْلُومِينَ Especially if they were oppressed. كَمَا اسْتَنْقَضَ اللَّهُ أُمَّةَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ الْأُمَّةَ الضَّعِيفَ مِنْ أَسْرِ فِرْعَوْنِ وَمَلَئِهِ Just like Allah Azza wa Jal saved Bani Israel, the weak nation, from the imprisonment of Fir'aun and his people. وَمَكَّنَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَلَّكَهُمْ بِلَادَهُمْ And Allah Azza wa Jal gave them authority on earth and He gave them their land. وَمِنْهَا And among them, أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ مَا دَامَتْ ذَلِيلَةً مَقْهُورَةً لَا تَأْخُذُ حَقَّهَا وَلَا تَتَكَلَّمْ بِهِ لَا يَقُومُ لَهَا أَمْرُ دِينُهَا وَلَا دُنْيَاهَا وَلَا يَكُونُ لَهَا إِمَامَةٌ فِيهِ And that the Ummah, as uh, regarding the matter which establishes its deen in the dunya, then it will have no leadership and it will be not the leader among the people or among other nations. وَمِنْهَا لُطْفُ اللَّهِ بِأُمِّ مُوسَى وَتَهْوِينُهُ عَلَيْهَا الْمُصِيبَةَ بِالْبَشَارَةِ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى سَيَرُدُّ إِلَيْهَا إِبْنُهَا أَوْ إِبْنَهَا وَيَجْعَلُهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ The mercy of Allah and the gentleness and the kindness of Allah to the mother of Musa and uh, lightening upon her the, the the weight of the calamity by giving her glad tidings that uh, her son will be returned to her her and he will be among the messengers and among them among the benefits and the morals that Allah decrees upon his slave some difficulty or hardship in order 
to grant him happiness that is greater than that. أو يدفع عنه شرا أكثر من or to alleviate a greater harm than the one that Allah عز وجل tested him with. كما قدر على أم موسى ذلك الحزن الشديد والهم البلي. Just like Allah decreed for the mother of Musa this this major grief and this unbearable uh, uh, stress. الذي هو وسيلة إلى أن يصل إليها ابنها على وجه تطمئن به نفسها. As means so that her son will reach her in a manner where she will be comfortable. وتقر به عينها and her, height, her eye will be delighted by that وتزداد به غبطة وسرورة and then she will be increased in happiness and joy ومنها أن الخوف الطبيعي من الخلق لا ينافي الإيمان ولا يزيله the natural fear you have from the creation does not negate Iman nor does it remove it كما جرى لأم موسى ولموسى من تلك المخاوف. Just like the mother of Musa and Musa himself, uh, they they came across those fear. So Musa, when he saw the snake, he feared it and he, you know, he ran away. فولى uh, and he, he ran away until Allah Azza wa Jal called him to come back and he told him that you shouldn't be afraid. So the natural fear that you have from a lion, meaning somebody says, أخي, I'm a mu'min. So he goes to the, you know, lion's cage and he stands there saying, I'm not afraid of anyone but Allah. You have a misunderstanding of what, what, what fear is. Or a child fearing his parents. This is not shirk. Somebody say that you, you have shirk, you fear your parents. No, it's normal that you fear your parents. So uh, this type of fear from the creation, from evil things, from, from animals, from others, is natural and it's fine. It does not negate uh, iman. ومنها and among them أن الإيمان يزيد وينقص that إيمان increases and decreases وأن من أعظم ما يزيد به الإيمان and from among the greatest things that increases one's إيمان ويتم به اليقين and one can establish certainty الصبر عند المزعجات is to be patient when you come across annoying things والتثبيت من الله عند المقلقات and that Allah gives you firmness when things are Worrying, كما قال تعالى, as Allah says, لولا أربطنا على قلبها لتكون من المؤمنين. Had we not uh, kept her heart firm so that she could be among the believers, أي ليزداد إيمانها بذلك ويطمئن قلبها, so that her iman will increase with that, and that her heart will find tranquility. ومنها أن among them إن أن من من أعظم أن من أعظم نعم الله على عبده وأعظم معونة للعبد على أموره تثبيت الله إياه وربط جأشه وقلبه عند المخاوف وعند الأمور المذهلة. From among the greatest bounties of Allah upon a slave and from among the greatest means of supporting a slave is that Allah gives him the tathbeet in his affairs. He gives him firmness in his affairs and Allah ties his heart during the moments of fear and moments of amazement, things that will, will disturb you basically and disturb your peace. At that point, he will be able to uh, say what is right and do what is right. Unlike the person who continuously remains to be stressed and fearful and worried. فإنه يضيع فكره. His, his uh, thoughts are, are basically lost. He is lost in thoughts. He can no longer focus or, or uh, you know, figure things out. And his mind is bewildered. He does not benefit from himself in that condition. And among them, that the slave, if he knew that the decree and the destiny of Allah is going to take place. There's no way around it. He does not abandon the means and the cause which will lead to that. And that does not mean that he that this will negate his belief in Allah. Allah promised the mother of Musa that he will return him, return him to her. And in spite of that, she made an effort to get him back. And she sent his sister so she could search for him and fetch him and find him. So even though Allah promised the mother of Musa that Musa will be returned to you, she didn't say, okay, then I can sit at home right now and just if Allah has it meant to be, it will happen. Which is the, uh, the reaction 
or the demeanor of many people. Many people I've come across in my life. خلص, if, Allah meant to, if Allah has it meant to happen, it will happen. طيب, what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? You, you have to do something about it. It's for you to find out if Allah has it meant for you or not. If you're just going to leave it up to Allah and you take absolute no action, then it's not going to happen. That's like someone say, if it's, if it's meant for me to have a child, I'll, I'll have a child. Okay, you need to get married. You know what I'm saying? You need to have a wife first. And you need to do something in order to have a child. It's not going to happen if you're not doing anything. وَمِنْهَا And among them, جَوَازُ خُرُوجِ الْمَرْأَةِ فِي حَوَائِجِهَا The permissibility of a woman going out to fulfill her needs. وَتَكْلِيمِهَا لِلْرِّجَالِ مِنْ غَيْرِ مَحْذُورِ And the permissibility of speaking to men if there's no, no violation or there's no uh, 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 worry that should be avoided. كَمَا جَرَى لِأُخْتِ مُوسَى وَابْنَتَيْ صَاحِبِ مَدْيَنْ Just like what happened with the just like what happened with uh, the Musa's, uh, Musa's sister when she was fetching for him, and also the daughters of the uh, man from Madian, who, you know, the wife of Musa before he married her. They were out there, they spoke to Musa and they told him their need and so on and so forth. So it's permissible for a woman uh, to go out and to shop and to get whatever she needs, and it's permissible for her to speak to the salesman. Provided that there are no uh, uh, iffy, mm, ambiguous, uh, uh, worrying behavior. So she shouldn't be uh, soft spoken and flirtatious in her speech because some women they fall into that. You know, they giggle and they laugh and they want to sound cute. Uh, uh, even though you're fully covered and whatever, the man is still going to appreciate that. And the man is still going to appreciate. Uh, uh, a, a playful uh, young lady or even an old lady is going to appreciate it at the end of the day and it's a, it's a point of attraction so when a woman is out there uh, mixing with men or uh, forced to speak with men then she should do so without being uh, flirtatious or without being funny without giggling without you know she has to be firm in her speech she doesn't have to sound like a man like salam alaikum brother that's not you know some some sister thing like that would fix the problem right? you, you have a soft voice you're supposed to sound like a woman but it's the way you deliver your speech. And if I were to emulate that, I would feel uh, like I'm from the LGBT people. So I don't, I'm not comfortable trying to give you a sample of what it sounds like to be flirtatious and, and uh, inappropriate for a female. But I'm sure most of you know. In fact, all of you know. All of you have an idea. You could imagine what it sounds like. So that's what a sister needs to leave alone. Otherwise, she could do what she got to do when she's out there. Uh, and that, that doesn't take away from the fact that staying at home is better. Staying at home is ultimately better. طيب. ومنها جواز أخذ الأجرة على الكفالة والرضاع والدلالة على من يفعل ذلك. The permissibility of taking wages for getting paid for uh, to sponsor someone or to breastfeed for a mother or a woman to breastfeed a child. Because I don't want to use the generic term to breastfeed someone everybody misunderstands. And, um, and that you can guide you can guide people towards that. You could say, or you could get paid for being basically a middleman. This is an evidence that you can get paid for being a middleman. So you say, yo, I got this real estate agent and I got a buyer and I'm the guy connecting you to, I want my piece. I want my commission. I want my percentage. It's halal. It's fine. As a middleman, you could do so. ومنها and among them أن الله من رحمته بعبده الضعيف الذي يريد إكرامه أن يريه من آياته ويشده من بياناته ما يزيد به إيمانه كما رضى الله موسى على أمه لتعلم أن وعد الله حق and from the mercy of Allah to weak slave is that he shows him uh, how Allah honors him or that Allah shows him some of his signs and he makes him witness those in order for his faith to increase just like Allah returned uh, Musa to his mother, so she will know that the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal is true. ومنها, and among them, أن قتل الكافر الذي لا عه, له عهد بعقد أو عرف لا يجوز. And among them is that killing the disbeliever who has a covenant because of some contract or because of some customary thing that is known to people is not permissible. فإن موسى عليه السلام عد قتل عد قتله القبطي الكافر ذنبا واستغفر الله منه. Musa considered him killing the Coptic man, 
the disbelieving Coptic man as a sin and he sought refuge and he sought uh, forgiveness from Allah for that. Meaning, it's not as the idea of some of the khawarij that if he's a kafir, his blood is halal. La habib. No, it is not. Waminha and among them, anna ladhi yaktulun nufusa bi ghayri haq yu'addu min al-jabbarin al-ladhina yufsiduna fil ard. That the one who kills people without any just cause is considered among the uh, the the evil. The jabbar is someone who's who's pridefully evil. And those who are spreading corruption upon earth. وَمِنْهَا And among them, أَنَّ مَنْ قَتَلَ النُّفُوسَ And whoever, that whoever kills people without a just cause. وَزَعَمَ أَنَّهُ يُرِيدُ الْإِصْلَاحَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَتَهِي بِهَا الْمَعَاصِي And he claims that he wants to rectify upon earth and he wants to scare the people of sin. فَإِنَّهُ كَاذِبٌ فِي ذَلِكْ وَهُوَ مُفْسِدٌ He is a liar in this regard and he is a corrupter. كَمَا حَكَى اللَّهُ قَوْلِ الْقُبْتِيَ As Allah said about the Coptic man, إِن تُرِيدُ أَن إِلَّا أَن تَكُونَ جَبَّارًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا تُرِيدُ أَن تَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُصْلِحِينَ عَلَى وَجْهِ تَقْرِيرِ لَهُ لَلْإِنْكَارِ So the, the Coptic said to Musa, you only want to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, evil upon the earth and you don't want to be among those who rectify it. He said that as means of establishing something not just to, uh, uh, you know, reprimand him, not just to forbid him from the evil. وَمِنْهَا أَنَّ إِخْبَارِ الرَّجُلِ غَيْرَهُ بِمَا قِيلَ فِيهِ عَلَى وَجْهِ تَحْذِيرِ لَهُ مِنْ شَرٍ يَقَعْ فِيهِ لَا يَكُنُ ذَلِكَ نَمِيمًا uh -huh. Informing a man, informing a person, uh, a man telling another man something about that was said about him, in the context of warning him from an evil that might befall him, this is not considered gossip. بَلْ قَدْ يَكُونُ وَاجِبًا Rather, that might be even obligatory. كَمَا أَخْبَرَ ذَلِكَ الرَّجُلِ لِمُوسَى نَاصِحَ لَهُ مُحَذِرًا Remember the man who came running to Musa said, Be careful, uh, al-mala' uh, They're all looking for you and they're fetching for you and they want to kill you. Huh? So go, يعني, basically run. So if you're in a predicament where you know that some evil is going to befall a man and you go and inform him of what others are saying about him, that might even be obligatory for you to save your Muslim brother and... It is not considered to be gossip. تمام. ومنها أنه إذا خاف القتل والتلف في الإقامة فإنه لا يلقي بيده إلى التهلكة ولا يستسلم ذلك بل يذهب عنه كما فعل موسى. That if a person fears uh, killing or, or, or the not being able to reside somewhere, then he should not destroy himself and he should not uh, surrender to that. Rather, he should go away as Musa did عليه السلام. Meaning, when Musa was told that, look, they're after you, um, and you, you know, so you know that you could either be killed or your residency might be compromised, then you should not put yourself forward before destruction. You should not act like a Rambo and say, oh, I'm going to face it anyways. And you should not surrender. Rather, you should go away like Musa did. وَمِنْهَا أَنَّهُ عِنْدَ تَزَاحُمِ الْمَفْسَدَتَيْنِ إذا كان لا بد من ارتكاب إحداهما that when there's a when there's a, a a conflict between two evil deeds two evil matters are conflicting two evil deeds are present two bad things are present the zahmat the zahmat is it's crowded and it is inevitable that you must commit one of them فإنه يرتكب الأخف منها منهما الأسلم then you commit the lesser of those two which is safer كما أن موسى لما دار الأمر بين بقائه في مصر ولكنه يقتل. For example, Musa when he was stuck between either remaining in Egypt but getting killed, أو يذهب إلى بعض البلدان البعيدة التي لا يعرف الطريق لها, or he has to go travel to some other far land that he doesn't know even know the path to. وليس معه دليل يدله غير ربه, and he doesn't have a guide to guide him except his Lord. ولكن هذه الحالة أرجى للسلامة من أولى, but that condition is safer than the first one. فتبعها, uh, فتبعها موسى. Then Musa followed that. So if you have to choose between two options, one where you know you will get killed, one where you will be tortured, then you choose the one where you tortured, and so on and so forth. You always basically commit the lesser of two evils. ومنها and among them أن الناظر في العلم عند الحاجة إلى التكلم فيه إذا لم يترجح عنده أحد القولين فإنه يستهدي ربه. That the one who observes matters of knowledge, the one who's studying ilm and is trying to basically arrive at a position, um, and he's not finding a preponderant opinion, he's not finding an opinion that is stronger than the other, then he should seek guidance from his Lord. 
ويسأله أن يهديه صوابا من القولين and he should ask Allah to guide him to what is correct of the two statements بعد أن يقصد بقلبه الحق ويبحث عن after he intends with his heart to find the truth to seek the truth and find the truth فإن الله لا يخيب من هذا يخيب من هذا حاله Allah will not disappoint the person whose condition is as such كما خرج موسى تلقاء مدين just like موسى when he went out towards مدين فقال عسى ربي أن يهديني سواء سبيل perhaps my lord will guide me to the straight path so here my brother says is a lesson for us as well that when you hear two opinions you hear me and you hear brother Hajj you hear me and you hear Daniel you hear uh, Sajid and you hear Daniel you, you see this warfare going on in da'wah you don't know what's going on ask Allah Azza wa Jal to guide you to the truth be humble and ask Allah to guide you to the truth I don't know in case you're confused if you're sincere Allah Azza wa Jal will guide you but unfortunately, a lot of people say, no, I don't need, I know already. I know I'm upon the truth. I know that he's, this guy's right and this guy's wrong. Yeah, Captain. Yeah, Captain. Yeah, Baba. Uh, ومن أن رحمة بالخلق والإحسان على من يعرف ومن لا يعرف من أخلاق الأنبياء. وأن من الإحسان سقي الماشية الماء وإعانة العاجز. And uh, among the benefits that the mercy, mercy to the creation and being excellent towards the people that you know and those whom you don't know is from the character of the prophets, is from the manners of the prophets. And that it is part of Ihsan to water someone's uh, uh, sheep or to help someone who is incapable, someone who is handicapped. ومنها, and among them, استجابة الدعاء بتبين الحال وشرحها. And among them, istihbab al-du'a, afwan, bitabiyin al-hali wa sharhiya. The, the uh, recommendation of making du'a by stating one's affair and explaining it. Walau kan Allahu aliman biha. Even though Allah Azza wa Jal is knowledgeable and knows of that. Li'annahu ta'ala yuhibbu tadarru'i abdihi wa idhari dhullihi wa maskanati. Because Allah Azza wa Jal loves that a slave uh, humbles himself before him. And he portray and he uh, displays, sorry, his humility and his need. كما قال موسى ربي إني لما أنزلت إلي من خير فقير. As Musa said, Oh my Lord, I am regarding whatever good, whatever خير you send down to me. I'm poor. I am in need of that. No problem in that. ومنها and among them أن الحياء خصوصا من الكرام من الأخلاق المحمودة الممدوحة. Both could have been correct. That modesty, especially when it comes from noble people, is from the praiseworthy traits. ومنها and among them المكافأة الإحسان لم يزل دأب الأمم السابقين rewarding people for doing good to you has always been the way of the previous nations so when someone does you a favor <clears throat> when someone does you a favor it's it's from the way of the righteous predecessors to do مكافأة to reward that person to reward that person <clears throat> that's if you want to have good character otherwise some people, Allah Musta'an. ومنها أن العبد إذا فعل العمل لله تعالى the slave if he does the deed for the sake of Allah. ها ثم حصل له مكافأة عليه من غير قصد بقصد الأول. Then he got rewarded for that without that intention being there first. فإنه لا يلام على ذلك. Then he is not blamed for that. كما قبل موسى مجازات صاحب مدين عن معروفه الذي لم يبتغ له ولم يستسرف بقلب على عوض. Just like Musa accepted the reward from the father of the girl from Median, even though when he watered them, he wasn't looking for any reward. He wasn't looking for any. He didn't even know that the man existed. So if you, for example, and the scholars say this. Now, a lot of the scholars prefer not to. But if you gave da'wah, let's say you went, they, you got invited to give a lecture somewhere. Hello? If you're going there knowing that these people, they usually give money. So now your intention is you want that money, you want that gift, then you've messed it up already. خلاص, your, your, your good deeds are out the window. This is, there's no ikhlas there. However, if you go there for the sake of Allah, and then they give you a gift at the end, then it is permissible for you to take it. It is permissible for you to take it. It does not negate your intention. No one can say now, oh, you know, you're getting paid for da'wah. Unlike people that say, no, I'm not going to give a lecture unless you pay me for the lecture. Imagine. So it's a whole different story. Allah musta'an. Whoa, how many benefits, ya shaykh? Wallahi, wallahi. Looks like we'll continue the others next week, inshallah. And then we will do, uh, we'll continue the lesson because we already passed the, the threshold of the class. Tayyip, we'll stop at this page.
and we'll take it uh, next week, inshallah. Let's see what you guys have been talking about. Uh, I don't understand. I've been trying to read this even during the class. Some true sellout, some true sellout to Muslim leaders are trying to be with you. Please be careful, those people, because doubt and salafi da'wah. Okay, thank you. Next, you have to expand your hands in sajda. But in congregation, you don't need to expand as there are too many people and you're squeezed. What if you have little room and one side, so you expand and the other you don't? No, you, you have them both look the same. You don't expand either. Now, is it permissible to shave the hair that is near the hairline or even trim the hairline itself to make it straight even so that the face looks cleaner or would that be considered as qaza and dasbi haram? I answered that last week. I've put... <laughs> Yo, this brother put it on his profile picture. That's sick. Yeah, it's permissible. Yeah, Sheikh Allah Hadik. It's fine, Habibi, because this is not your beard. It is not your beard. And it's not qaza. You're just trying to fix. It's like having hair in areas that you don't want. You can get rid of it. No problem. That was smart. That's the smartest thing someone has done in a while. Yalla, next. <laughs> Uh, أخي, how did you find the masjid in Istanbul with Ahlul Bid'a? I did not go to a single masjid. I did not go to a single masjid in Istanbul uh, for a number of reasons. One of them, one of them is because I know I'm going to see a lot of things that I don't appreciate, and um, it, it's a challenge to deal with uh, uh, Turks if you don't speak Turkish. So. I, I committed the, uh, I, I not even lesser of two evils because I'm not obliged as a traveler to, to go to the masjid in the first place. But anyways, I did not go to the masjid, so I don't know, Habibi. I'm not of those people, by the way, who are fascinated with this, uh, fascinated with going to, to masjid uh, to see all oh, this big masjid with this gigantic masjid with this design. All this is against the sunnah of the Prophet, ﷺ. All of these decorated masjid that are, uh, built with extravagance is against the sunnah it's from the signs of the last day and what matters to me in the masjid is a place to pray I think the best masjid I've ever been to uh, outside of the uh, haramain and the haramain is because of their virtue not because of their built structure or their decoration is uh, masjid al-mu'min in, in, in St. Andrews uh, in Los Angeles it's a house wallahi it's a house but I cannot ex I cannot describe the tranquility and the peace I used to find over there. I, I remember this place corner by corner, inch by inch. I remember the carpet. I remember the back entrance, the front entrance. Um, I remember upstairs, which was like not always accessible. I mean, that's a masjid that it's a house that they turn into a masjid. So I'm not the type who, who goes and say, oh, this masjid, this beautiful masjid, this beautiful masjid, that, Akhi, please. It's more distraction for me in Salah, if anything especially if the rug has all types of designs and decorations. So I'm very old school and plain in this regard. Now, Warwick of Florence. Assalamu alaikum, akhir alaikum, salam. Do you think you should do a refutation of Pikachu, Hizb al-Tahriya tendency like what Shamsi and Faris Hamdi and Sajid did? No, because they've already covered that well. Uh, I think uh, Brother Wasim's book has done a great job in, in addressing these... Uh, these, uh, these guys, and so did uh, Knowledge North and Sajid. Uh, I need to focus on other things. I still have, I still have things that are pending. Do you not see? Do you not see how crazy the uh, our Diobandi brothers are? Until now, every other day they come say, "Oh, stop hiding! You're not back from vacation. Uh, you're scared." <laughs> I'd rather watch a, a FIFA. If you really want to ask me, if, if I have to sit there and work on refuting the Dio Bundys again, even though there's nothing to refute because we already explained to them the position of Sheikh Bin but because we have to dumb it down to the lowest level, we have to make it like really, really explicit for them to finally understand which takes work. I would rather watch Brazil. 
But obviously, they're they're not they're not gonna like that comment either. No, no, nobody's running away from them. They're just not important. Wallahi al-Azim. Wallahi al-Azim. They're not that important. They're not that relevant. At this point, actually, I'm considering doing the Danielle refutation before I even do theirs. And they can keep waiting. Let them keep waiting. And by the way, speaking of waiting, didn't they say they have 101 mistakes of mine in the Arabic language, which they posted a month ago and they said coming soon? Are they still looking for the mistakes? I have, a, I have, a, I have an idea or an assumption. That they said, okay, let's put a big number, 101, and then we will look for them. And then when looking for them, they didn't find 101, so they, they haven't been able to publish the video. Or they already had 101, but they're waiting for me to say something. And in order to shut me down, they're going to post it. I don't know what kind of game they're playing. It doesn't. It definitely feels like tennis. It is like tennis. Bang, 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 bang. But at this point, I am uh, not near the court, and they can keep warming up. Because I just don't care at this point. May Allah guide them. Lovely brothers. You got to love these Deobandi brothers. I love them so much in, in a way that others may not understand. Not the Daniel love to the Deobandis. Definitely. Uh, a sarcastic one, I would say. Daniel genuinely loves them, by the way. They're the greatest in the Ummah, mashallah, tabarakallah. Real athari. Next. Yalla, ya Hajj. Wa alaikum salam, Habibi. Today got Corona positive. Please make dua for me. When are you going to make Halloween refuting video? I just mentioned it. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant you a speedy recovery and make it means for your sins to be expiated and for your ranks to be raised in the dunya and the akhirah. Ya Ar Hassan. Wa alaikum salam. How do you respond to people who say Nuh could, couldn't have carried so many animals? And how do you respond to people who say he only carried some animals, not every animal. We don't say anything to either. Why? <laughs> I'm trying to think of what kind of context would this conversation be? He couldn't carry the animal. Yes, he did. No, um, he didn't carry all the animals. Maybe he did. Who? What? What? Who cares? Allah drowned the world and Noah and his people survived and they were animals. Khalas. Next. This is like logic versus religion and revelation. Submit. Um, <laughs> yeah, Atif. There's nothing, Habibi. Right now, there's nothing. The nearest that might happen, inshallah, make dua for me because I'm really looking forward to it, is me going to Malaysia. Inshallah, in March. Tentatively, I will go to the Discover Islam Week in Malaysia, which I am looking forward to already from this moment onwards. Inshallah, may Allah make it happen. It's been a long time since I've been there and I enjoy myself more than necessary over there. In giving da'wah, in case you misunderstood what I meant. And playing some sports. And feeling like a teenager again. And harassing the brothers. And getting on their case. And traveling. Flying. Next. Uh, who was Sheikh Muhammad Aman al Jami and why is he accused of being the founder of Jamia? Oh, Sheikh Muhammad Aman al Jami is one of the senior scholars of the Adda'wa Salafiyya. Uh, and uh, they accuse him uh, of that because anytime someone does not call uh, to criticism of the rulers and, and does not call to uh, revolution and rebellion, they, uh, they become an agent. And they come up with names for them. What do you think Madkhali is? Same thing. Madkhali, Jami, uh, Randkhali right now. It's just, it's just the name. Before that, Wahhabi. Before that, Muslim. At the time of the Prophet Sallam, they used to say Saba, Sabi'een. They called them Saba, Sabi'een. Those who become Muslim, they came up with a name for them as well. Supposedly, when you became Muslim, you went astray. It's the same old story, man. Started by the Kuffar, continued by the believers. All right. Ha. Deviant believers, I would say. Next. Um, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Blue blanket. Ruling on joining school clubs that have remixes such as National Honor Society. I don't know. I mean, this, the school is mixed. I don't understand. The school is not free. There's no free mixing in the school, but the school club has free mixing. My free mixing is all across the school. If you really want to get it, Get the job done. Get out of school and do distance learning. Next. 
What's your opinion regarding the so-called Sheikha International Quran Competition? An advice to anyone who wanted their daughter to participate in the future. I, I don't know what that is. But I'll tell you one thing. If those sisters are going to publicly recite the book of Allah in front of a crowd of people, then it's wrong. And you shouldn't send your daughter or your wife or your mother or your sister or anybody in your family. Assalamu alaikum, alaikum salam. The duha prayer is valid 20 minutes. The duha prayer is valid 20 minutes after Fajr until Dhuhr. But I'm confused because isn't this the time when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prohibited Salah? It's wrong. Yeah, I don't know who told you that it's 20 minutes after Fajr until Dhuhr. No, 20. No, ya akhi. No, 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 no. Okay, the, 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 I understand now. The time of Salat al-Duha is uh, from Shuruq, after Shuruq, all the way till 20 minutes before the Adhan of Dhuhr. That's the time for Salat al-Duha. Otherwise, that, that, that time is the time where uh, it's prohibited. Now, uh, do you do you sat in the dars of any major scholars? You mean did I sit in the dars of any major scholars? Well, that depends on who you consider to be major scholars. If you consider Muhammad uh, Muhammad Mukhtar Shinqiti. And he is from the Hayat Kibar al Ulama, he's from the committee of the senior scholars in, in, uh, in the kingdom. Then, yes, I've sat, uh, I've sat in his dars um, many, many times. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, many times. Visited him in his home, uh, spoke to the Sheikh, and, and everything. And I'm a close friend with a very close friend of him, Sheikh Uthman, who I haven't seen in a while. But yeah, if you consider him to be of the major scholars, then yes, I have. If you mean bin Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, and bin Baz in Albani, then that's uh, back then I was on something else. Now, uh, what books of Arabic should a student read for vocabulary building? Uh, wait, go back. What books of Arabic? For... Wallahi, ya akhi, I mean, honestly, I would recommend that you read the Quran and you read the English uh, word for word translation. That would be the best way for you to really build your vocabulary. I can't think of of any regular academic books because I didn't I didn't have to do that. Arabic being my mother language, I don't have to do that. So I would be the wrong person to ask. You should ask that person, however, Muhammad Ali, to someone who's a non-Arab who learned Arabic. They would be able to give you a better tip. What is the Islamic ruling regarding laser or smile? Does it consider change the creation of Allah? No. As far as I know, that is not considered uh, to be changing the creation of Allah. Rather, it is enhancing. Uh, uh, the features that you have you're not altering the, the creation of Allah you just you know you're bringing them back to the condition that they're supposed to be and just look at the children when they're young their teeth are super white and because we don't use the miswak and we don't take care of our teeth they're no longer as white so if you whiten them you're just taking them back to the condition they're supposed to be in plus it's from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to keep your mouth uh, hygiene, hygienic and clean and to have a, 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 a you know Allah is beautiful he loves beauty None of these, inshallah. Yani, uh, th that is is uh, what is looked into, and it's not looked into by the scholars as someone who's doing like a, a you know plastic surgery type of thing where you change the creation of Allah. Naam. Same thing with braces. The scholars, for example, unanimously, as far as I know, allow braces, even though you could say that you know my teeth are naturally crooked. I'm 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 straighted in them, so it's okay. That doesn't count as changing the creation of Allah as intended by the ayah and the hadith. Naam. Next. Okay, we need to call it a day because my mom sent me a voice message which I must listen to. A good book on Islamic land, property law. Wallah, I don't know, I'm Muhammad. That you have high assumptions of me, higher than I'm, I'm worthy of. Now. Okay, we're done. We know... Uh, we know how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did ghusl and we know that to take a bath... On a Friday is Sunnah. So the way you have to take a bath on a Friday, it has to be the same way the ghusl. Yes, it is the same way. Now, you actually do ghusl on, on Jumu'ah. The hadith says, Man ikhtasala. Assalamu alaikum, Uncle Wajdi. Wa alaikum salam, nephew Fufuz. What is the ruling on reading the translation of what you're reading from the Quran in mind after reciting the Arabic? What, 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 what? What is the ruling on reading the translation of what you're reading from the Quran in mind 
after we said in the Arabic? Who's reciting? I'm reciting? Like yourself. No, you're reciting the Quran. Ah, what is the reading on read and translation of what you recite read from the Quran in mind after reciting the Arabic? That's fine, inshallah. I understand, I understand. I thought he's talking about listening to me. All right, guys, that's it. We're gonna call it a day. Inshallah ta'ala will catch you tomorrow. Uh regarding uh, we'll catch you tomorrow during our Aqidah class during which you could uh, ask further questions and we'll take it from there. If we have not responded to your question, please forgive us. No uh, intention, no hard feelings and no evil intentions uh, whatsoever. But uh, we have to prioritize and it's been over an hour. Jazakum Allah khairan. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka tu wa alaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.